move it. And this could be your issue here. You might have to adjust the size, the fixed, si the fixed IK size. So um, about 20 millimeters is good, and you should be fine. Um, you, have, you can create groups for um, dynam dynamics. And then um, controller size, you can adjust the size of the controllers on each. If you see here, each, you get a little, there's a little circle around each one of these. And those are, that's the controller. So when you get controller size, you can change the size of those controllers, for instance. And change it back. Um, ghosting mode, I don't use it much, but I believe it gives you an onion skinning effect for your animation. And um, the size mode here, underneath the controller size, going back a step, sorry. Um, this size mode is the size for when you have the IK selected, or um, a controller selected. So. There's three sizes. There's one, which is basically that. <laughs> and then um, two, which is a little bigger. And then obviously three is a little bigger. Um, I like the smaller size myself, so keep it down to one. All right. I'll fix it. Okay, the first thing I like to do when I'm about to, is before I start animating something, is to uh, prep it. And these controllers here on, on the IK Boost, if you right click, if you select any one of these and you right click on it, and I'm going to select the first one, the one that IK Boost is applied to. Sure. Oops. Okay, you right click on any of these goals. Um, you have another menu. <laughs> that menu has a IK stop, handle, um, mode. You can change the mode of how of um, for instance rotate and move so like if i wanted to right now when you first apply ik boost the first the first object that you apply ik boost to, to gets automatically gets a move mode so that it's you can um move it around move it on the y if if you left click on any of the x y or z's it'll only move on that axis so if I'm clicking on X, it's only moving on the X. If I click on Y, it's only going to move on the Y. I can also grab the controller and move it as well. Um, undo works fairly well in, in IK Boost, which is good. Um, however, if you redo and undo a bunch of times, it might, it might wig out a bit. So back in the mode, if I select Rotate now, it changes the, the controller. And you can rotate on, on the axes. Bank and you can you can move it as well as long as it's um, the first object in in the in the on top of the hierarchy. Uh, okay. Um, There's a quarter neon mode. Quaternion. Qu Quaternion. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and um, you know you can set that mode for when you get gimbal lock. A lot of times it helps out with gimbal lock. And there's user defined access, and I tend not to use. I haven't really used that too much, so I'm not going to get into too much. But uh, supposedly you can define a user access. Um, so like. 
if you're having a rotation that's happening on the bank at this certain angle, you can change the angle of that bank or pitch or heading. Yeah, I haven't used it too much, so. And then you have the motion tools for the, on the controllers. And the motion tools on the controllers are pose copy, motion copy, pose copy from, motion copy from, uh, pose save, pose load, motion save, and motion load. All these functions here work in conjunction with the mode you have set up for, for like your keyframe modes. So like your parent mode, your all item mode, your child mode. Um, these motion tools here function with that as well. So like if you're in child mode and you have, and you're selected a controller down here, and you want to copy a motion from, say, another chain, um, you can do that, and, it'll, and you gotta, just got to make sure you copy from the same point. And, um, and I'm going to do that, too, so we'll get in a bit of that. Just kind of go in over this a bit. Then you have options here as well. Um, you can set IK target. Here is setting copy from, so you can kind of tell IK where to copy what you're going to, where you're going to copy your motion from. I, I have to kind of show you how to do that because it's, it's very simple, but it's, it's just basically it remembers <coughs> the last object you selected. So it remembers the last controller that you selected. So when you select the next controller or one, one, like I've had a separate chain here and I selected that same, in that same controller in the same spot and I wanted to copy that motion, I, it would copy that motion from that spot if, depending on what keyframe mode I'm in. I'm going to get a lot more into this in a bit. <laughs> um, rename is simply like renaming your bones and uh, dynamic edit, um, I'll get into a bit, dynamic edits is um, each bone has a weight, uh, resistance, or not bone, I'm sorry. Each controller, when applying dynamics, has a weight, a resistance, a spring, vis viscosity. Um, the size is just the size of that, of the controller. On and off, turns it on and off. And, and edit, it brings it back, so. Um, you can adjust. You can adjust the weight by right-clicking on these controllers. And I'll get, it, I'll get more into this a little bit later, but what it does is when you apply the dynamics, it adjusts the resistance of the, in the dynamics here. It adjusts the weights here for the dynamics. So you can actually adjust the weight per, per um, controller. Does this also respect the modes the parent-child? Yes, body? yes it does. It, 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 when you finally apply the dynamics to the, the um, dynamics effect to, to your controllers, it does respect the keyframe, keyframe modes for child and parent and so forth. Does that answer your question? Well, sorry, when you're changing the weight, can you change the weight of all of them at once by setting the mode to all items? Oh, I see what you're saying. Hmm. Well, I want current. Uh, no, I, I don't think I've been able to do that because <laughs> I've always had to adjust each one. But, oh wait, but you can do that. I wonder if you can do that in child mode. My bad. There you go. So yeah, it respects the, the modes. Okay, and you're saying, but you're saying went further than my request. Like you're saying that when you apply dynamics, It'll, and you have it in child mode, it'll, it'll respect the keyframes of, of upstream and then downstream applies dynamics, like that sort of thing. I'm, it, I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Uh, when you apply dynamics, this is when you actually hit calculate. Right. Uh, will, it, will it also respect the, that lower left-hand menu and let's say you set child mode and only downstream dynamics get applied while upstream your original keyframe? Correct, except there's two dynamic modes in IK Boost. There's like full dynamics where you just, you apply dynamics and it'll respect all the dynamic features in Lightwave. And then there's another feature in IKBoost called dynamic effect. 
And dynamic effect will simply apply kind of a dynamic effect to the, to the hierarchy chain. It's not real dynamics. But like, for instance, you could like dangle a chain and have it swing and it'll like swing around and stuff. But it won't collide with a collision object, for instance. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And I'll, and I'll, I'll do that a little bit later. It's a little more advanced. I want to still try to keep some of the simple stuff. I want to get more into some of the, I'm kind of getting a little ahead of myself here, but I just want to show off that you can adjust the spring, the weight, and everything here. And, I, and obviously now, I guess it, it does uh, respect the, the modes, so, which is pretty awesome. But um, let me get out of this for now. Okay. So, before we get into animating, <laughs> one of the things I like to do is to right click on controllers, go to options, and go to controller edit. This allows you to move the controller out to make it kind of um, a controller that you can animate with. So like I pull out the first one here, and you can kind of arbitrarily select which other handles you want to pull out. So you can have multiple handles along the chain, which will help you easily control and manipulate that chain. So I'm just going to go through and pull out some handles. While in this mode, it has no effect on actual IK other than just moving the, moving the handles, or I mean moving the controllers out themselves. Um, there are some options here. There's reset. You can reset it back. Uh, there's float, which is kind of interesting. It'll stay positioned, locked in that position. Yeah. You can see it. You can see example there, which is good and bad sometimes. So, <laughs> and I'm just going to move it out. And you can adjust the size mode here, which is actually a little easier to do if you want to adjust your size modes for us. Just the selection size. So, like if you select it, you want it to be bigger or smaller. You can do that on the actual controller if you right click and are in in edit mode. So I'm going to exit edit mode by edit, edit end here in the selection. Now, the next thing we need to do is to determine where, where in this chain I want to have it locked down. Because if I grab this, the whole thing's going to start moving around. And um, I think just the, at the, the first link in the chain would probably be a good place to go in and say IK stop. I want the IK to stop there. It's basically just right click and it's the first selection there. It's, once you do that, you select any of these nodes and that one link is not going to move. The IK stops at that link. You can see that. I actually have animation on this. So let's go to, um, let me delete that out. Yeah, I have animation on there, sorry. Let me, I'll just clear that out. Um, I'm just gonna go to all item, select that, right click, delete key, and it deletes all the keys, it's all gone. So, to answer your question, if I animate here, and, hmm, that's interesting. Oh, yeah. I'm like, wait a second. I make that mistake quite often, and you will too. <laughs> um, you'll forget what mode you're in. You'll forget. I do it all the time. And um, it's a pain. But when you remember what mode you're in, it's great. <laughs> So if I create animation, 